Hey, this is Dr. Darwin, the new dentist coach, with another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin, where you ask questions and we get you the answers. Ask questions about how to get into dental school as a pre-dental student, how to uh, get into residency, life after residency, and even becoming a, U a dentist in the U.S. Uh, after being trained internationally, maybe in, in, in Japan, maybe in Puerto Rico, or not Puerto Rico, but Brazil, or even from Nigeria. And that is what today's episode is about. Today's episode is about how to become a U how to get into a U.S. dental school after you've trained internationally and after you already are a dentist in Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria. Uh, guys, be sure to um, check my notification. <laughs> Subscribe to my, uh, my channel, Dr. Darwin Speaks. Go ahead and push uh, notifications so that you guys don't miss these videos that I come out on a weekly basis. Very, very good contact. So again, today, what you're gonna learn today is some tips and some strategies on how to apply to U.S. dental schools as an international dentist, spe specifically an international dentist that's trained uh, in Nigeria. Today, we're, we're joined with uh, Dr. Mayowa Sen uh, Senosi. Did I say it right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> Dr. Senosi, how you doing? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is uh, Mayo Senosi, uh, a dentist from Nigeria. I graduated from the dental school in the year 2014. So I had my internship program at the National Hospital Abuja in Nigeria. So afterwards, then I decided to move to the United States in 2017. So to pursue my dental program here in my dental career here in the United States. So. That's great, man. So you've been here since when? You've been to the US since how long? Like 2017. 2017, okay. So you got your and we, you got your dental degree in Nigeria. What year? Twenty fourteen. Okay, so twenty fourteen. So you've been here a little bit over a little bit over a year. So welcome. How do you like it so far being in the U.S.? Oh, it's been great. It's been great. Good, good. Now, what are you now? What are you currently doing? Well, I'm currently preparing for my partial exam. And at the same time, I try to work, do some jobs to sustain myself and then push myself forward. And then... Okay. Good, good, good. So tell me, I know you reached out to me and you found me, I guess, on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. So tell us a little bit more about your specific question and the thing that you're running up against as far as a challenge and thing that you're trying to trying to do. Yeah, actually my one of my challenges is actually how to get into dental school, particularly the you know, the advanced standing programs. And then also some of the other some of the other challenges I also have is that you know from also trying to adjust my immigration status that will also further enhance my my, my entry into the dental school and then also trying to know if there are any other additional academic qualification I could attain to further make me competitive and enhance my entry into the dental school and also even beyond the dental school itself I also, I also have the intention of going into the postgraduate residency program as well. All right, you, you broke up just a little bit. You said uh, how to get into dental school, having some challenges with your immigration status, uh, how to enhance some of your academic yeah. credentials. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and what was the fourth thing? There was another thing there. And also beyond dental school, and also I'll, I also, I'm also i interested in also getting to, into a postgraduate residency program too. So. Okay, yeah, which which uh which post grad program is it a specialty program you're thinking about or just general? No, a specialty program. Specialty. What what specialty are you thinking about? Horapatology. What is it? Horapatology. 
Herapatology. What is that? <laughs> okay, let me say, let me say horror diagnosis. I don't know how they how they call it here, but it's it's a the pathology aspect of dentistry. Say it again. Just move your mic up. From where I came from, we call it oral pathology. Oh, oral pathology. Oral pathology. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Oral path. Yes. 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 yes oral path. Oral medicine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's all, oh, man. That's a great. That's a great specialty. So, so you got a couple of things that you've been, that you've been working on since you've been here. Um, so let's talk about the probably the first thing that that's going to start giving you some momentum, which is uh, get how to get into dental school as an advanced standing uh, a, a dentist from Nigeria. So, you know, right now there's, there's two pathways, man. Um, the first pathway is to do um, four years of dental school all over again. Uh, here in the U.S. is four years. Typically we take people who are um, usually have enough. I think it's, I forget the number of, of uh, requirements right now that credit hours is, it, it eludes me, but usually the equivalent of at least two years or maybe even three years of studies and credit hours. And most people go four years of, of, uh, of uh, college and then they go to dental school. But there are some instances where you can get into dental school after your three years of college. Dental school, again, the first pathway is four years, right? The other pathway is for people like yourself who are trained internationally and come to the U.S. as an advanced standing dentist, and that's usually two years. And that's a totally different pathway, similar but different. Um, I actually want to pull up, there is a website that I want you to go to um, that has a lot of information about uh, uh, the whole process for advanced standing dentists that are looking for programs, number one, but all the, re all the requirements, that's what's gonna really, really help you to really know what schools need what, what they require, what, what they recommend. Uh, the website that I'm gonna take you to is called, it's ADEA, A-D-E-A, and I'm so glad that you got a pen and paper, you writing this down, A-D-E-A.org, O-R-G. And if you go to their website, I'm actually going to uh, pull it up here so you can see what I see. And uh, I'm gonna show this to you so you can see it. Let's see here. All right, so you see my laptop here? Yep. Okay, great. So if you go to this website, what you'll see, it's under what's called the CAAPID pathway right here where my cursor is, the IDEA C-A-A-P-I-D directory. And right now we are in the middle of that application cycle. All right. Okay. Um, this is an application cycle in the directory of all the U.S. and Canadian schools that offer advanced standing programs for international dental graduates like yourself. All right. Okay. Um, they, they accept these applications from people like yourself, graduates like yourself. And um, if there is a, another program that's not listed here, you would actually have to contact the school and find out. But okay. there are three things that most, most of these uh, schools require, at least as it relates to the application. Um, you need to have some type of English proficiency exam. TOEFL, which you're shaking your head, you know about. Uh, at least two letters of recommendation. I recommend you have three or four, actually. Um, let's see, what else? Um, and usually, sometimes most of the schools will have an additional fee, like an application fee, in addition to this particular application. And look, look what you got right here, man. You got all these institutions that have programs, and they tell you the state, the size of the class, um, uh, when the application uh, application date started and when the deadline is, and when people start to matriculate into the class. You also have information here about what's required, part, part one. Uh, some, some programs require part one. Some 
just uh, some also require part one and part two. All right. So that's very that's important to know. Some of the programs um, will accept, not require, but accept what we call the ADAT, which is the Advanced Dental Emissions Testing uh, Test. Uh, that's usually more used more here in the U.S. for people who are applying to residency programs. But some uh, advanced standing schools will take it as a just as it, it's accepted, as not required. And then you have another uh, item here called. Uh, uh, ECE, I can't remember what that's what that's called, and also another item here called WES. All right, so these are the things. These are the schools. You've got schools in Alabama. You've got uh, oh man, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six schools in California. Uh, I know you're in Maryland, so that might be a little bit too far away. Uh, University of Colorado. Howe University, that's in your backyard, not too far from you, all right? University of Florida also has an advanced standing program. Uh, University of Iowa, Southern Illinois University in, um, in, uh, in Illinois, University of Illinois in Chicago, UIC, which is, in, which is actually in Chicago, Indiana University, Louisville, Boston University on the East Coast here, uh, Tufts. Michigan University of Michigan, Rutgers in New Jersey. Here in New Jersey where I'm at is uh, there's a school, UNLV, uh, Columbia University, which is in New York, New York University, NYU, uh, Buffalo and upstate New York. Uh, two schools in, in Pennsylvania, which again are close to you. I'm mentioning those. Temple, all right, they have a, a Temple has a program and also University of uh, Pennsylvania has a, has a program. University of Puerto Rico has a program as well. So you've got one, two, three, six, eight, 10, 12, uh, another 15, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22. You got about 25, actually, let me go back, about 30 schools, 30 schools that have advanced standing. All the information that you need to know as far as uh, the application deadlines is right here on this website. So this is going to be a great resource for you. Have you started looking at programs or looking at schools as of right now? Yeah, I'm going through through them, trying to familiarize myself with how how the application cycles goes. Yeah, so I, I would think for you, you you probably want to go through maybe that two year program, this advanced standing program. Um, and uh, it's, it's going to be very competitive. As you can see, the, the class size is, is, is much smaller than most of the typical sizes. Like, for example, at the, uh, let's see, uh, at Howard University, they only take 10, up to 10 people, whereas their, their total class is closer to like maybe 80 or 90, right? So they're only really taking up to about 10% of their normal class. Uh, schools like NYU, which is the biggest dental school as far as number of students, they take, uh, they have over 350 students in their regular classes. But for their advanced standing class, they take anywhere from five to 15 people. And uh, again, these advanced standing programs are gonna be very, very competitive. Uh, as you can see at NYU, the application deadline uh, was back in December of 2018, and they're starting in May. So most of these programs, because of their two-year program, um, it's actually more, it's more like, I would say more like um, 24, more like 30 months, because they have you start in May, and then uh, for a year or about 18 months, you're kind of with your group, your own group, and then you get infused into the, uh, the, uh, the, the D4 students or the senior dental students, usually your last year. But again, this is a great resource for you. Definitely would recommend that you, um, that you check that website out and actually go there to start your search and start seeing, you know, start making a list of schools. Again, with you being in the Washington uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. You've got Howard, and uh, I, I, 
couldn't I couldn't remember if we saw VCU, which is Virginia Commonwealth down in Richmond. I don't know if that's a that's a program too. And you've got some schools in Philly, and then also New Jersey, and then also New York. So those are some schools that are that are close. Um, so that's the first step. All right. Um, you mentioned something about your immigration status. Yeah. So what's what's happening with that? Yeah, currently, so currently working on my um, adjusting my immigration status. So I'm still expecting responses from the immigration. Currently, for this application. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So that's something that you can that you have to constantly, you know, kind of work on. The uh, the third thing was you mentioned was your academic credentials. Yeah. How can you increase your 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 I guess really your candidacy, your portfolio for school? Um, you know, here in the U.S., you know, again for these programs, usually part one is required. Maybe some programs part two, but we still I think in the U.S. here we still want you to have some experience shadowing and looking on, on how dentistry is practiced here in the U.S. So one of the ways that you can increase your academic credentials is uh, shadowing, finding a dentist or some dentists to, uh, to work with uh, in the Maryland area. I, I've got a couple classmates that are general dentists and specialists in the Maryland area. I can, I can get you connected with and that you can kind of shout, shadow and, um, you know, maybe even work in the office. They may need some help um, as it relates to chair side assisting or other things that, um, you know, that you can't do as a dentist, a non-licensed dentist in the U.S., but you can definitely help out with, and that'll give you some more exposure as to how um, dentistry is practiced here. That's a, a, an important component, as well as, uh, of course, some community service, right? Um, some of the schools here will have different organizations that uh, participate in community service. You can volunteer and be a part of that. And which is good, which, not, which is nice about that is you actually get to network. You get to network with some current dental students at different schools who will eventually, could eventually lead you to some of the admissions counselors, the admissions uh, committing people on uh, at the school that are that are taking part of the selection um, process. So that's another reason to do some networking, not only because it's required, but also so I mean uh, to do some community service so you can do some networking um, as well. All right, um, and, I, and I think um, I think the other thing that you can do is. You know, again, be out in, in different types of environments where, where people can get to, get to know you and meet you. Right now, your biggest obstacle is nobody knows who uh, Dr. Uh, Seno, uh, San, no, Sanosi, no, who, who Dr. Sanosi is, <laughs> right? No one knows who you are right now. Yep. So you're, you're like in, in the shadows, you know, you're kind of like obscure. So. One of the things that you've got to do is get some attention, but more or less get people to know who you are. So after you make your list of schools that you're interested in, um, that, that would be the time to start investigating and see how you could, you know, maybe go to those schools and maybe participate in some of the organizations, some of the activities that some of the organizations have, whether it be uh, SNDA, the Student National Dental Association, or ASDA, the American Student Dental Association, those are usually the two, you know, one of, uh, of the two biggest organizations for, for dental students uh, at dental schools. And if you can get connected with one of the students that's a member of one of those organizations, that will allow you the opportunity to start participating in some of those activities. Um, some, some of that content, some of those experiences you can including your personal statement, because you're going to need that for dental school here, um, and uh, some of that information, and also some of your activity will also go on your, your resume or your CV for uh, your time and your particip participation uh, in here uh, in the U.S. And 
it's going to be a good talking piece, you know, something that you can uh, utilize and, and, and talk about when you get your interviews, right? So all of that is connected with um, how to um, increase your academic credentials, all right? And then the fourth thing you mentioned was, you know, after dental school here in the U.S., going into residency and aura path, you know what? We got some time for that. We got time for that, but you also, you got some work to do before we even get there. Yeah. But that is a possibility. It, it is a, a residency that uh, maybe is not as popular as ortho and oral surgery and pediatric dentistry. But I will tell you, it's very, very much needed, especially in most of the dental schools. There's a, there's a shortage of profession, uh, pro, uh, professors. Um, in some of the dental schools, they collaborate with the medical schools and they share some of the same faculty for the first, uh, first and second year of dental school, meaning dental schools were trained with the medical students, especially in subjects like anatomy, physiology, oral pathology, things like that. So definitely a, a residency that, um, uh, could utilize someone like yourself who has an interest in oral path and oral medicine, especially if you're thinking about maybe uh, being in academia, uh, either full time or part time. So that's a great, great selection of a of a specialty. But you know what? We got some time. We got some time for that. So let's let's get you in dental school first here in the U.S. Yeah. So was that helpful? Yeah, very very helpful. That's great, man. I, hey, that's that's what we want to do. We want to get you into a U.S. dental school as an advanced standing dentist. All right. So um, I'm glad. So so what do you think you're going to do now with that information? What are you going to do with it? Well, I have to sit down with it, go through what I actually jot down, and then start planning how to implement the information here. Yeah. So, Start planning what, would you say? So start planning how to implement those information. Yes, you got to implement. This information means nothing. It's not valuable if you don't implement it. So yes, and if you need some help in impl implementing it, you need some accountability, if you need some coaching, I'm here to help you each and every step of the way. Um, you know, you, you still have some time for a couple of the deadlines for 2019 for that cycle. Um, so if you're interested in trying to get things together for this cycle, I can help you. We got, you know, we got probably about no more than, I think, February, March. I think I saw one or two of these things, uh, maybe April, maybe the last that the application deadlines uh, are in or stop. But if you need some help, I can help you, man. Uh, we'll, I'll work with you one on one and we can, you know, get you into dental school here in the U.S. either this year or even uh, we can start planning for next year as well. How's that sound? Sounds good. That sounds good. Okay, great, man. Hey, if you guys that are listening, if the information that you heard sounds good, write a comment down below, right down here, write a comment, let us know what you think, how you're going to be able to use it. And you tell me, you tell us what you think um, is your biggest challenge or your biggest obstacle in becoming a dentist in the U.S. Right? Write it right here. What's your biggest challenge in, in becoming, um, and that's the question of the day, what's your biggest challenge in becoming a U.S. Uh, a licensed dentist in the U.S.? Again, guys, thanks for, um, thanks for listening. Make sure you check out the next video. Actually, yeah, right here. The next video is going to be coming right here. There's going to be another one right here as well. Check out those videos, and hopefully they help you. All right, Dr. Uh, Dr. Mayua, thanks so much for reaching out to me. And again, I'm here to help you as much as possible. Take care.